In this lesson, we will explore a range of statistical methods beyond the widely known chi-square test. We will learn about various non-parametric tests that serve as powerful alternatives for when we lack interval ratio data or in situations where certain assumptions about data distributions cannot be met. First, let's look at the goodness of fit test, a fundamental non-parametric technique that is an extension of the chi-square test where we have only one category to analyze. Traditionally associated with categorical data analysis, this test allows us to assess whether observed data fits a specific theoretical distribution or expected proportions. The goodness of fit test goes beyond traditional hypothesis testing by employing ranks or counts rather than relying on precise numerical values. Using an example of hospital admission and discharge data, we can see how the goodness of fit test works as a non-parametric test. It allows us to assess whether the observed frequencies or counts significantly deviate from what is expected under a given distribution. We have counts that we compare to a known proportion or an all-equal distribution. In this way, the goodness of fit test is just like a one-sample t-test. Looking at this data, we examine the discharge counts to see if there is a significant pattern. Here are null and alternative hypotheses. The null hypothesis is that he observed data follows the specified theoretical distribution. The alternative hypothesis is that the observed data does not follow the specified theoretical distribution. StackCrunch can do this easily for us. Once we type the data into StackCrunch, we see there is apparently a lot of discharges happening at the start of the weekend. To analyze the data, we simply click on the Stat tab then the goodness of fit menu, and then select chi-square test. This calls up the chi-square test dialog box. We click on the column that has our observed counts, discharges in this case. The expected values would be all cells in equal proportion, or simply put, if nothing is going on, the discharges should be the same each day. If we had a population value, of some research data to tell us what the counts should be, we would select that column data to run our test. We click Compute and StackCrunch calculates the expected counts and performs the chi-square test for us. With a p-value of 3%, this one is significant, right? We reject the null hypothesis. It's like on the weekends they're just discharging a lot of people on Friday, the expected number of patients to be discharged should be 92 and 120 were discharged. And this difference is not due to chance. When dealing with independent groups, non-parametric tests provide robust alternatives that do not rely on specific distributional assumptions. These tests are particularly useful when the data is ordinal, skewed, or when sample sizes are small. Let's look into two widely used non-parametric tests for independent groups. The Mann-Whitney-U test, and the Kruskal-Wallis test. Both use ordinal level data. The Mann-Whitney-U test is a non-parametric equivalent of the independent samples t-test. It assesses whether there is a significant difference between the distributions of two independent groups or treatments. This test is suitable for ordinal or ranked data and can be done easily by computer software. The Mann-Whitney-U test works by ranking all the observations from both groups combined and comparing the sums of ranks for the two groups. The test produces a U-statistic and corresponding p-value. If the p-value is below the predetermined significance level, we can conclude that there is a statistically significant difference between the groups. The Kruskal-Wallis test extends the comparison of groups to scenarios where there are more than two independent groups. It serves as a non-parametric alternative to the one-way ANOVA. The Kruskal-Wallis test determines whether there are significant differences in the distributions of multiple groups, without making assumptions about the shape of the distributions. To conduct the Kruskal-Wallis test, we rank all the observations from all groups combined and calculate the sum of ranks for each group. The test produces a test statistic and a corresponding p-value. Again, if the p-value falls below the predetermined significance level, we can conclude that at least one group significantly differs from the others. When we conduct a Kruskal-Wallis test, a significant result indicates that there is a significant difference among the groups being compared. However, it does not provide specific information about which groups differ from each other. To identify the specific groups that exhibit significant differences, 
we can utilize a post hoc test such as the Dunn procedure. The Dunn procedure helps identify which groups differ significantly from each other by conducting multiple pairwise comparisons while adjusting for the increased chance of type 1 errors or false positives that arise from conducting multiple tests. Next, we will look at the tests for dependent groups. This table lists the non-parametric tests for dependent groups based on the number of groups and the level of measurement. These tests allow us to compare related or paired observations within a group when the assumptions of parametric tests, such as paired t-tests, are not met. Recall that dependent groups refer to situations where observations are not independent but are linked or connected in some way. These may arise from matched pairs, repeated measurements on the same subjects, or pre- and post-treatment comparisons. The non-parametric McNamara test is a statistical test used to analyze paired nominal data. It is specifically designed to assess the difference in proportions or frequencies before and after an intervention or treatment, where the measurements are dependent within each pair. The Wilcoxon signed rank test is a non-parametric equivalent of the paired t-test. It is used to determine if there is a significant difference between paired observations or treatments within a group. This test is suitable for ordinal data. The Wilcoxon signed rank test works by ranking the absolute differences between paired observations and comparing them to the expected distribution under the null hypothesis. Cochrane's Q test is a non parametric statistical test used to analyze dependent categorical data that involve multiple measurements or repeated measures on the same subjects or items. Designed to assess whether there is a significant difference in the distribution of outcomes across multiple categories. Cochrane's Q test is particularly useful when the data violates the assumptions required for parametric tests, such as the chi square test for dependent samples. It is commonly applied in various fields, including psychology and social sciences, where researchers are interested in examining changes or patterns in categorical variables over time or under different conditions. The Friedman test extends the comparison of dependent groups to scenarios where there are more than two related groups. It serves as a non-parametric alternative to the repeated measures ANOVA. The Friedman test ranks the observations within each group and calculates the average rank for each group. The test compares the average ranks across groups to determine if there are significant differences. The test produces a chi-square test statistic and a corresponding p-value. This chart shows the parametric non-parametric analogs we have been discussing. Also known as parametric non-parametric equivalents or alternatives, these are pairs of statistical tests that serve similar purposes but are based on different assumptions about the underlying data. The actual test employed is based on the independence of the groups, the number of groups, and the level of measurement as summarized in the last slide for this module. You will also find a handy guide to non-parametric tests in the charts and tables guide from the course. This guide sorts most of the tests we have discussed in this lesson organized by test name, level of purpose, and measurement level. By employing non-parametric tests, researchers can analyze data with fewer assumptions and obtain robust results, particularly for non-normally distributed or skewed data. However, it's important to note that non-parametric tests may have less statistical power compared to their parametric counterparts, especially when the assumptions of the parametric tests are satisfied. In the next module, we will wrap up our testing procedures with correlation and regression of biomedical data.